Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah, today we'll continue with town planning. And in today's lecture, Inshallah, we'll discuss about Mohanj Daru, which was one of the great cities of the ancient Indus Valley civilization. Mohanj Daru. If we look at the current site of Mohanj Daru, Mohanj Daru at present is located in the Larkana district of Sindh, Pakistan. The site covers approximately an area of over 250 acres. The Indus River is currently situated to the east of this site. Now regarding the town of Mohanjadaru, the town of Mohanjadaru was divided into two sections, the Stadel and the lower town. The Stadel was smaller in area but was very highly developed. Uh, while as the lower town was larger in area, but was very less developed as compared to the Stadel. The Stadel included numerous structures such as the Great Bath and there were uh, monasteries in the Stadel. The Stadel was built on raised ground. The Stadel owes its height due to the fact that the buildings were constructed on brick platforms. Now, if we look further towards the Stadel, which was located in the western end of the city of the Mohanjadaru, the Stadel, which was highly developed, the area of the city was built on top of mound of bricks, which were almost 12 meter high. Archaeologists have unearthed several large buildings and structures uh, on the Stadel Mount that may suggest that these buildings may be used either for public gatherings, religious activities or important administrative activities. Archaeologists have also unearthed some small buildings, although they were not common. Now regarding the lower town of Mohanjadaru, the lower town of Mohanjadaru, which was quite large as compared to the Stadel, the lower town is made of numerous lower mounds that lie to the east and may have represented multiple walled neighborhoods. The lower town was uh, actually the place where most of the citizens of Mohanjadaru resided. In the lower town of Mohanjadaru, the, avenue, the various avenues divided lower town into many blocks. Alleys and lanes further divided these blocks. If we look at the features of a typical house in the lower town, most of the houses that were built in the lower town were made of, of standard size of 28 into 14 into 7 centimeters. Archaeological evidence has also shown remains of staircases which indicates that uh, even the lower town had multiple storied houses. In the lower town of Mohanjadaru, people had access to clean water either from wells within their homes or from public wells in the streets. Every house had its own bathroom paved with bricks with drains connected through the wall to the street drains. Some houses have remains of staircases to reach the second story or the roof. Uh, archaeological evidence also suggested that there has been over uh, 700 public as well as private wells in the city of Mohanjadaru. The ancient city of Mohanjadaru was quite famous for its well-planned sites. Dividing the area into blocks of roughly equal size and having approximately rectangular plan. There were two main streets running through the town at right angles. The streets were approximately 30 feet wide. Now the Great Bath. The Great Bath is one of the best known structures among the ruins of the ancient Indus Valley civilization and is pre present at Mohanjadaru in Sindh, Pakistan. Archaeological evidence indicates that Great Bath was built in 3rd millennium BC, soon after raising of Stadel Mount on which it is located. The Great Bath of Mohanjadaru is called the earliest public water tank of the ancient world. It approximately measures 12 meters into 7 meters and has a maximum depth of 2.4 meters. Two wide staircases, one from north and one from south, served as the entry to the structure. 
as 1 meter wide and 40 centimeter mound is present at the ends of these stairs. A hole was found at one, one end of the bath which might have been used to drain the water into it. The floor of the tank was watertight due to finely fitted bricks and mud laid on the edge with gypsum plaster and the side of the walls were constructed in a similar manner. To make the water tank even more watertight, a thick layer of bitumen uh, or a kind of waterproof tar was laid along the side of, poo, poo, uh, side of the pool and presumably, presumably also on the floor. A series of rooms were located along the eastern edge of the building and in one room was a, was a well that may have supplied water that was needed to fill the tank. Rainwater also may have been collected for this purpose, but no inlet have been found. It had a long bathing pool built with waterproof bricks. Granaries have also been discovered by archaeologists, which may have been in the form of massive uh, brick chambers and that were supported by wooden spur structures. These granaries have even provision for air ducts to dry up the grains. These granaries were uh, located adjacent to the Great Bath. Now present position of planning in India. It was actually Sir Patrick who visited India in 1915 to advise the governor of Madras on the planning and development of some of the old towns of India. And it was owing to his efforts and the series of lectures he delivered in the various states that town planning was not only interpreted as planning of streets and good houses, but also interpreted as planning for the people who lived in, in these houses for their economic as well as their social ways. He gave his expert advice for improvement of 18 major towns of India and also insisted on correct diagnosis or on the various evils that these towns suffered. In India, the various states have passed the Town Planning Acts to enforce Town Planning Actions. The main source of these Town Planning Act was the English Town Planning Act of 1909. The main provision of the Town Planning Act of 1909 is that the local authorities are given power to prepare and to enforce town planning schemes on open lands in city. There were various amendments that were made in the Town Planning Act of 1909 And new acts were passed, important of being the, them the Town Planning Act of 1947. In India, regional and local town planning is not practice, practiced on a comprehensive basis. And as such, town planning process results in the acquisition of properties, their valuation for compensation and betterment charge. It is because of such approach of town planning that we see few cities such as New Delhi, Chandigarh and Gandhinagar which came to be called as planned cities. For the purpose of looking after and planning and execution of new cities or new parts of metro cities, various organizations were set up by the central government. In Gujarat, the Bombay Town Planning Act was replaced by the Gujarat Town Planning and Urban Development Act of 1976. Under the section 23 of this act, it provided jurisdiction to the local authorities to prepare development plans for urban development areas, to prepare town planning schemes, to carry out surveys in urban development area for planning of these development plans, to guide, direct and assist the local authorities and other subsidiary or statutory authorities in the functioning of urban development area with the matters pertaining to planning development and use of urban land to control the development, accord, uh, development activities in accordance with the development plan in the urban development area, to execute work in connection with the supply of water, disposal of sewage and provision of other services and amenities, to acquire, hold, manage and dispose of property, movable or immovable, to enter into contracts and agreements or arrangement with, uh, with any local authority, persons or organizations, to carry out development work in an urban environment, as may be assigned by the state government from time to time.